Our changing workforce. According to global staffing firm Robert Half, 64% of working professionals believe changing roles every few years can actually benefit their careers. But whether you're looking for higher pay, a healthier work-life balance, or a new challenge, is job hopping necessarily a good thing and a good thing for you? And once you're ready to start, how do you go about it? New York Times bestselling author Reynold Levy has spent countless hours advising those who aspire to aspire. Today, he's sharing the lessons he's learned from his extensive career in the nonprofit, commercial, and public service sectors with all of you. We're delighted to have Reynold Levy with us now, the author of the new book titled Start Now, because that meaningful job is out there just waiting for you. So it's good to see you. Good to see you. So, I'm going to start with that statistic, all right, because you and I are of a generation, and certainly the generation before us, especially the generation before us, where people thought they're going to get their first job and they're going to stay with that same job for their entire career. We see now that the numbers dramatically suggest otherwise. Why do you think that is? The speed of change. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it has to do with technology and technological change. A lot of it has to do with uh, changes in the economic models. I, I was president of Lincoln Center for 13 years. Right. Across the street from it was something called Tower Records. Mm -hmm. Across the street from it was something called the largest Barnes and Noble right. in the country. Right outside our door here. Uh, gone, Barnes right. and Noble, gone Tower Records. In industry after industry, we have seen major transformations. So the necessity to prepare yourself for change both in your current job, with your current employer, and in future employment is an imperative. And has that all affected the mindset? Because there was a time when people would look at a resume saying, what, can this person not hold a job? You know, why are they bouncing from one thing to another? Is that now not as much of an obstacle or an obstacle at all? It's much less an obstacle. Some employers think he took a risk. He or she took a risk. That's a good thing. They're entrepreneurial. They gave it a shot. Uh, particularly when they're when you're younger and have that opportunity or when you've been a professional success and you are looking for change later in life those changes are often favorably viewed by an employer there's so much in this book that that's so valuable to to people at every level of their lives let me just highlight a couple of things here in our conversation one of them is you know we see this this enormous debate taking place in higher education right now the the notion of is liberal arts is that still a valuable thing or does that not provide you the training that you need for your job so you 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 have that that competition between the notion of liberal arts and education and the notion of training for a job. What do you think about that? I think there's a division of labor in life. Um, colleges educate, employers train. Um, I'm a graduate of a law school. Most law firms don't think good law schools prepare lawyers. Law firms prepare lawyers. So the liberal arts education helps to prepare you for something more important than a job. It helps to prepare you for life. Uh, meaning it helps to frame your values, uh, what you care most about, and it helps you to create qualities that are useful at any job. Communicating well, orally and in writing. Thinking clearly. Learning how to research a problem. Learning how to meet a timetable. Learning how to work in a team. All of those characteristics are applicable across almost any job you would encounter. That's what college can give to you at its best. How about some other tips here? One, one of the things you focus on is this notion of mentors and advisors. Sometimes I, I hear people say, no, I want to do this on my own. You know, I, as if there's something wrong with your, your, your being shepherded along the path in some way. What's your thoughts about the value of mentors and advisors in the job search? Absolutely indispensable. Finding jobs that are meaningful is a collective enterprise you will obtain leads, you will obtain knowledge about what you might want to do, you will obtain help from people you know. Often people are hesitant to ask others, not because they want to do it on their own, they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid they'll ask and someone will say no. But as a, a, a fundraiser from my time as president of Lincoln Center, um, this is not a college exam where one out of every three is a failure. This is baseball. Yeah. One out of every three, you're our most valuable player. It's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, so don't be afraid to ask. 
people are willing to help. And research shows that as often as not, acquaintances help you as much as good friends. So don't be afraid to ask for help. How about the time element? You talk about this in the book and, and the, the notion of frustration that comes along with, with the time element of looking for, for a new position and not getting it right away. How do you combat that, that frustration? Typically, uh, finding a full-time job that's meaningful and important and is likely to last, let's say, a minimum of five years, one out of every five Americans will get a new job this year. Um, and others will be thinking about a new job, either with their current employer or another employer. If you change jobs, it typically will take nine months. So the approach to it should be one of, think of it as a voyage, a voyage of discovery and a voyage of self-renewal, rather than something that's tension-laden. That's such a great piece of advice. How about the idea of going into interviews? How should you be preparing? What should your expectations be? And then what should the follow-up steps be that you take after an interview? So when I came to see you, mm -hmm. um, I did a little research and learned about your background so that I would be comfortable in talking to you. So the first step is to try to convert an interview into a conversation so the interviewer almost forgets that they're interviewing you because they're enjoying the experience so much. And you're talking as much about them and what they do and what the company they work for does as you are about yourself. So Start Now is not only about finding a job and thriving in a job, it's about building a meaningful life. It's about helping others during the course of your life. Uh, and the richness that that brings to your life and that of your family. That, and that's such a great thread throughout all this. It's not just about a job. Mm -hmm. it, it's about the, the, the rest of your life. There's so much in here that provides great guidance for people. And, and most important, as we said, not just looking for a job, but for the rest of your life. Uh, Ronald, it's always good to see you. It's great you to see you. You always come in with a great conversation. So I'll look forward to the next one. Thank you. Right. Thank you. you. Again, the book is called Start Now because that meaningful job is out there just waiting for you. The book is out there just waiting for you folks out there. So make sure you get it, Ronald. Good to see you again. You be well. Good to see you.